fifth graders. Today we're doing unit five, lesson eight, use whole number facts. Let's multiply whole numbers and decimals. Decide if each statement is true or false. Be prepared to explain your reasoning. 330 times 2 times 10 equals 6 times 10. Well, let's look at what's the same about these two equations. What's the same is the times 10. So that means if it were true, this and this equal. And I know 30 times 2 is not 6. So these are going to be false. That is not equal. Okay. 30 times 2 times 10. Okay. Well, again, I can see that the times 10 is the same. And then I have 3 times 30 times 2, which is going to be 60. And then I have 20 times 3, which is going to be 60. So yeah, this is going to equal out. I'm going to say that this one is true. Then we have 60 times 10 is the same as 30 times 20. Well, 60 times 10, I can multiply 6 times 1, which is 6, and then add the tens from here and the tens from here, which would be 600. Add those zeros. Over here, I can do the same thing. 3 times 2 is 6, and then I have 10 here, 6, 60, and a 10 here, 600. So this statement is true. All right. Moving on to our next activity. Decide whether each equation is true or false. Explain or show why. So I can see my base numbers here. 4 times 7 is 28. But that's if they were both whole numbers, right? This is 4 times 7 tenths. It's 28 tenths, not 28. So this one is going to be false. The real answer is going to be 28 tenths, so that means 2 and 8 tenths. Okay, for this one I have 5 times 8 is 40, but I have a tenth here, so it's 40 tenths, or 4. So this is also false. That one's also false. It's tricky there. It's 40 tenths, not 40 hundredths. Then I have 6 times 3 hundredths, that would be 18 hundredths, right? Or I, and then over here I have 6 times 3 is 18, and that's 18 times a hundredth, or 18 hundredths. So I'm going to say that one's true. That's 18 one hundredths. This one's going to be 8 times 7. 8 times 7 is 56, right? 56 hundredths, so this has to end in the hundredths place. And this is 8 times 7 is 56 times 1 tenth. So that's going to be 5 and 6 tenths, so this is also false. All right. So if I had to fill in the blank to make this equation true, I would have to make this 1 tenth, right, because I have a tenth here. 3 times 7 tenths would be 3 times 7 times 1 tenth. And this one would be 3 times 7 hundredths. So it would be 3 times 7, and then I would have to multiply that times 1 hundredth, or 21 hundredths. And then this is 5 times 4 times 1 tenth, so that means that this is going to be 4 tenths. All right. That made me think there. So 8 times 7 hundredths is, the same, is not the same as 8 times 7 times 1 tenth. Remember, this is false. How could, we, how could we revise this expression to make the equation true? So to make it true, I would have to have this as a tenth, right? This would have to be 7 tenths because we're having the tenths right there. What can I write in the blank to make the expression true? Well, we just wrote the answer, didn't we? Okay, here's our next activity, interpret diagrams and expressions. Explain or show how the diagram represents each equation. 
So I have three, one, two, three. So one, so one hole, two holes, three holes. And in each hole, I have 12 hundredths. I have one tenth and two hundredths shaded in. So that's how I see this one. In B, I have 3 times 12, which is the number of shaded pieces, 12 pieces, and each piece is 1 100th. 100th, 100th, 100th. I have 12 of those. For this one, 3 tenths are full columns, 3 full columns, 1, 2, 3. Get a different color so you can see it. 1, 2, 3. And then I have three to, uh, hundredths, three two hundredths, one, two, three. That's the t groups of two pieces. Find the value of three times 12 times one hundredth and explain or show your reasoning. So that would be one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, three tenths, and then two, four, six hundredths, right? And if I did 12 times 3, I would get 36. And I know that they have to be in the hundredths place because it's 12 hundredths, 36 hundredths. So if I thought of it as, that's how I thought of um, number 2. If I, number 3, find the value of 3 times 1 tenth. Well, I have 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths. And then the value of 3 times 2 hundredths, 2, 4, 6. So that's how many hundredths altogether? 10, 20, 30, 6. So that's how I would see that. Let's see what else they ask us. Oops, let's get rid of this. How did the expression 3 times 12 times 1 hundredth help you find the value? Well, I was able to just multiply the whole numbers, then notice that the product is that many hundredths, 36 hundredths. How did the expression 3 times 1 tenth plus 3 times 2 hundredths helped you find the value? I just multiplied the tenths and then the hundredths and then added them together. Which strategy do, to, do you prefer? I think I prefer the first one. Multiply the whole numbers and then times that place value. I think I do that. I like the first strategy because I can just use what I know about whole number products and it will always work. Today we used our understanding of place value to multiply decimals. Describe the process you would use to find the values of these expressions. So I like that first method, right? So I would do 25 times 3 which I know is like three quarters because a quarter is 25 cents, but I can multiply it out if I didn't know that. Three times two is six plus one is seven, and then it's in the tenths place, so I need to have, multiply that times one tenth, one tenth, which would give me 7.5. So let's pretend I didn't put that decimal there. So seven and five tenths for this one. Okay. For 7 times, I'm sorry, 25 times 3 hundredths, I would do the same thing, 25 times 3, but then the 5 needs to end up in the hundredths place. Or I could think of it as 75 times, or 75 one one hundredths, which would be 75 hundredths. How can we multiply any whole number by an amount of tenths or hundredths? Find the whole number multiplied by the number of tenths or hundredths and multiply that result by one tenth or one hundredth. So I can multiply any whole number by the, this whole number and then multiply it by its place value. That's its place value, right? All right, so let's do the cool down and see if we've gotten it. Fill in the blank. Three times, I'm sorry, five times three tenths is the same as saying five times three times one tenth. That's the place value. Five times three hundredths is going to be the same as five times three times one one hundredth. And so five times three hundredths will be fifteen hundredths. 
There we go. There we are, boys and girls. Multiplying decimals is much easier than multiplying fractions, isn't it? So you can do this. Keep practicing and think about the place value. That's what's the most important thing to do. Think about that place value. All right, I hope to see you in Lesson 19 where we'll be doing more of illustrative math. Thank you for joining me.